just about to start day five of the Cape Wrath Ultra. Um, most of the people have gone. I think Steve's still uh, waiting to go, but um, everyone else in the tent has gone. I'm just getting my feet prepared. So I've got this trench cream, which uh, our friend James produces, which I'm just putting on my feet. Then I've just got to pack my bag, um, my dry bag to hand in before before I start. Uh, 20, uh, 27 miles today? No, maybe not that much. 25 miles, I can't really remember. <clears throat> Around about 25 miles today. With three big climbs. With four days completed and four left to do, we were now halfway through the Cape Wrath Ultra, having covered some 180 kilometers on foot with around 6,000 meters of elevation gain. Okay, day five, ready to go. Don't know why I'm wearing my midgy net, they're not too bad today. Nobody else has got their midgy net on. The attrition rate was also beginning to rise, with 32 runners having dropped from the race by the beginning of day five. Have a good day. Thank you, see you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are starting day five. Okay, just start with a gentle walk. Just get the legs moving. It's longer than yesterday, but uh, not <laughs> Too bad. So that first 7k was a bit of a cheat. All fl pretty much flat. Uh, tarmac road and then track. And I've done 7k in 50 minutes. So that's like, that's 7k for free basically. So that's really good. So we're now on this first climb. It's drizzly, there's a cool breeze. Perfect for running, really. Hello. 7k for free at the beginning, wasn't it? Oh yeah, got that. That was lovely flat stuff. Lovely and flat. How are you feeling? Good, how are you? Um, Early days, I don't know yet. Okay, well we've only got 20 miles or so to go. Do you know what, that sounds really good actually. When you say 20 miles to go and we've only just started, that sounds really good. <laughs> it's much better than, you know, 35 miles to go, isn't Which it, it will be tomorrow. But then again, you know, that's better than 40 odd miles, which is the day before. Yeah. It's all relative. It is. Find your happiness where you can. Any blisters? Uh, touch wood, none so far. Okay, stomach Feel all right? Good. Stomach's feeling much better. I've got an appetite finally after three days of not having an appetite, so I feel good. Excellent stuff. Let's smash it out. Let's do this. Right, eight, are we at 8k in? Literally just hit 8k. Away we go. Having had a relatively calm introduction to day five, it wasn't long before the terrain and the weather began to deteriorate. I also made my first navigational error of the race, missing a right turn and heading left towards Loch Fada rather than up towards Fisherfields Mountains. Thankfully, this only added around 600 metres to my distance for the day and I carried on into the wind and rain, still feeling good and loving the rugged wilderness around me. 22 kilometres in. Three and a half hours, three hours, 31 minutes. We've got about, I'd say probably 19K to go, so we're over halfway. It's very cold, very windy. Once again, everyone else has got their rain jackets on and they're all being sensible. For some reason, I just don't feel like I want to put my rain jacket on. It's not raining, uh, but it's very windy and that's making it cold. But because I'm running and my top is dry, or it feels dry-ish, I'm not, you know, I'm not freezing or anything. I'm cold, but I'd rather be cold than too hot. I feel pretty good, actually. I've just had peanuts 
and uh, baby bell cheese. So that's filled a little hole. <laughs> Drinking is going okay. Legs are sore, as you might expect, but I'm still moving, so it's all good. Hi, buddy. Good to see you, man. How you feeling? Good, good. So I've had three or four of the uber fast runners pass me. Haven't had the leader yet because they have to start at a later time. They're not allowed to start at seven o'clock in the morning because if they did, they would get to the campsite before it's built. By the way, if you are enjoying this video and indeed if you've enjoyed the series so far, then please do subscribe to the Film My Run channel. It's completely free and it helps me carry on making the most epic films I can of the most epic running adventures, all for you. And your support is truly appreciated. Okay, time to climb. 25k in three hours 57. Going up. Is this, it? Is this a cut off checkpoint? 33k in, so technically about seven or eight, eight k more likely, maybe even nine k to go, but hopefully seven. Just come to the bottom of the descent of the second. Uh, climb so we've got one more climb to do 400 meters seems like it's been too easy today so it feels like there should be uh, something surprising coming up something horrible is on the horizon like the last climb is going to be like just awful or something now have I missed the turn where's the turn Anyway, we'll see, we'll see. Right, so this is the, there's one cutoff point here. Um, and it's 12.37 at the moment. Cutoff here isn't for ages, it's like six o'clock, just after six, so we can, I can just walk home now. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Beautiful little bridge. Hello guys. Are you having a spiffing time? Oh yeah, I'm surprisingly good actually, it's ridiculous. It's got an easy 10k to go. Is, is it horrible 10k? I, I think it's a hill. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a, a lump. It's because it seems like it's been a bit too easy today. <laughs> I'm waiting for the sting in the tail. Have a good one. All right, see you later, bud. Hearing that back, it does sound rather arrogant, but in the context of what we'd already done, I really felt we'd been let off the hook on day five. The final climb was wet underfoot, but it was worth it for this beautiful waterfall. On the last climb now, 35k done, it's five or six to go. I'm dying for something to eat, I'm really hungry now. 36 and a half k, six hours and one minute, climbing the final hill before we drop down to camp. So hopefully about 5K to go, something like that maybe. It's just hard to tell. I'm really hungry. Good views. It's been overcast all day. A bit of rain earlier on, not much though, windy cooler, much better for me. Um, but yeah, I'm hungry now. I'm looking forward to my chips when I get down into camp. But all good, day five, all good. Really pleased with day five so far. 
If you watched last year's video about volunteering at the Cape Wrath Ultra, you would have seen me climbing up out of camp on day five to the top of the hill which I'm just about to reach. It was windy last year but also warm and sunny. Day five in 2024 had been colder and wetter but that's no bad thing for me. There it is, there's camp. Couple of kilometers to go, one and a half K maybe. With the Isle of Skye off in the distance and the port of Ullapool not far away, my journey through what is commonly called the Great Wilderness of Dundonnell and the Fisherfield Mountains was coming to an end. Dropping down to Loch Broom and the campsite, I felt for the first time that perhaps, just maybe, I could complete the Cape Wrath Ultra. Day five, Cape Wrath Ultra complete in just under seven hours. Where am I going? All the way around there? Oh my goodness. I can't believe you didn't cut a hole in the fence. I've so far to go. Cheers. On day four, I crossed the finish line at 3 p.m. Day five must have been easier because despite being 10K further, I crossed the line before 2.30 in the afternoon, feeling absolutely fantastic. No, six, six something. Coming up in episode seven of the Cape Wrath Ultra. Worth it just for that. Very close to the edge, do not want to fall down here. People pay a lot of money, apparently, to come and fish for salmon in this river. Someone has been along here and mowed the grass. Final climb done, that was a killer climb. We have got norovirus in camp. 